we want to evaluate the limit of the rational function as x approaches infinity. There are several ways to determine this limit. We will take a look at how to determine the limit by analyzing the degree of the numerator and denominator, and we'll also take a look at a more algebraic approach. Let's first review how to determine limits at infinity for our rational functions using the degree of the numerator and denominator. Number one, if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, the limit is zero. Number two, if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. And number three, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then the limit approaches plus or minus infinity and does not exist. So going back to our limit, let's determine the degree of the numerator and denominator. Remember the degree of a polynomial in one variable is equal to the highest power on the variable. The numerator has degree seven. The denominator also has degree seven. Because the degrees are equal or the same, the limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which would be negative seven divided by two or negative seven halves. Let's also find this limit using a second method, which is a more algebraic approach. The general approach is to divide the terms in the numerator and denominator by the highest power of the variable in the denominator. <coughs> well, x to the seventh is the highest power of the variable in the denominator, and therefore we divide every term in the numerator and denominator by x to the seventh. Next we simplify. In the numerator, negative seven x to the seventh divided by x to the seventh is negative seven. Minus three x divided by x to the seventh is three divided by x to the sixth, plus eight divided by x to the seventh doesn't simplify. In the denominator, two x to the seventh divided by x to the seventh is two. Minus nine x divided by x to the seventh is nine divided by x to the sixth, plus three divided by x to the seventh doesn't simplify. Now from here, remember, whenever we have a constant in the numerator and the denominator approaches infinity or negative infinity, the value approaches zero. So going through each term, notice negative seven is not affected by x. Minus three divided by x to the sixth approaches zero as x approaches infinity. Eight divided by x to the seventh also approaches zero. In the denominator, two is not affected by x. Minus nine divided by x to the sixth approaches zero as x approaches infinity and three divided by x to the seventh approaches zero as x approaches infinity. So notice now we're left with just negative seven divided by two, or once again, the limit of negative seven halves. I hope you found this helpful.